Python's list comprehensions are a beautiful and much loved syntax for working with data. We can do transformations, modify objects in place, express filters and maps with easy to read code, and they're quick and have great isolation properties. Seriously, what's not to love? They work for lists, dictionaries, tuples, and some other places that you might not expect. So let's go from noob to pro with comprehension. I'm Alex, a data engineer and author, and on Zazen Codes, I teach full stack data science. If you like my videos here, then I have more content for you on Patreon. There you can find a link to sign up for my second brain Notion repository, where I keep all of my programming notes and cheat sheets. And you can sign up as a supporter to get access to my video walk we're going to be working in this Jupyter Notebook. As you can see here, I'm using Python 3.9. Here's my first example. We're going to generate a list of squares from 1 to 5. I can quickly unpack what's happening here. We're first doing a range from 1 to 6, which is going to be an object, and I can convert that to a list in this way. And then what we're just doing is taking the square of each. So a lot of programming languages might want to use a map to express this. Here in Python, we could have a function, which could be like lambda x, and then we could take the square of each thing and then pass in our list, which would be range from 1 to 6. Oops. And that would be this like map object. And maybe if I convert that to a list, we can see the result. But um, I love the list comprehension syntax way of expressing this. To me, it's much more readable. Now, in addition to doing this with a list, we can create a tuple. So here I'm going to create a squares tuple. You can see the representation now has typical brackets instead of the square brackets. With this tuple object, I'm not able to append or remove anything from it. So if I try to do this, and I say I want to pop the first element, it's not going to let me do that. Whereas for squares, if I was to try that, it'll let me do that, it'll return that, and then now this one is not going to be in my list anymore. So that's just the difference between tuples and lists in Python. And this here is the syntax for using tuples in list comprehensions. Now what I'm doing here is not actually as obvious as it might seem. So if we grab this code again, let's say I don't have tuple and I just have this part. It's creating a generator object. And that generator object is an iterator that I can say next on, and that will get me the next element. Now, if I run this again, it's going to give me one again because I'm not able to access the second iteration of this. So what I could do is I could say my iterator is this and then I am now I'm going to print the next of that iterator. And now if I go ahead and take the next again, it's going to give me that next element and I can go down here and I can get that next element after. So effectively, when we actually call this code, what we're doing is we're converting that generator into a tuple object. So what I could also do is I could convert it into a list object in this way. This is, of course, um, equal to the list comprehension syntax like this. So now let's talk about dictionaries. Here's a dictionary of squares pretty much the same thing as our list comprehension, but now we're creating a dictionary by using these curly brackets and expressing the syntax as a colon with the key on the left side and the value on the right side. A really common place you'll see this is with, by zipping two lists together in order to create a dictionary from them. This is one of the first places that I used a, a dictionary comprehension when I was learning Python. And here we're seeing that Alice gets mapped to 24, Bob gets mapped to 30, and so on. And we're using this zip syntax. If I run this alone, I can see that we are getting a zip object. And let's see if this is working like our generator that we were talking about. Okay, so it looks like it is. And you can see how we're unpacking this. We're getting the name and the age from this zip object. So rather than doing this as a dictionary, we could also do this like a list comprehension. And we could say, put a tuple in here and say name age for name age in zip names ages. What else could we do? Well, we could just say args for args in zip. 
that does the same thing. And if we wanted to, we could just actually cast it as a list and that would also just be doing the same thing. Okay, let's ramp it up a bit. We're gonna do some filtering. Here we're getting a list of all of the squares from one to 10 and then filtering that list down to only the even squares using this modulus operator. So X, you know, mod, if X is um, like five, five mod two equals zero, this is gonna be false, right? We wanna get, we, that's not even, but then, you know, six would be true. So this is just a typical way of picking out evens and odds in programming using like the idea of the remainder in a division operation and, and checking if the remainder is zero or not. Um, but, but right here, we're just more interested in, in the list comprehension. Let me show you another version um, of this. So rather than doing like this mod thing, we could just say if X is less than five, right? So this is going up to a range, let's say a thousand. And then um, we, we just wanna pick out the things that are less than five in that list. And if I say to the opposite, it's gonna grab everything above five here. Filtering is a beautiful way to use list comprehensions. Um, how I find myself using this a lot is I'll have some list of things, you know, and then what I want to do is recast that with some filter. And then I can print that and we just get the result I'm looking for. So here's another filtering example that's a little bit more complicated. In this case, we're including multiple conditions. So you can kind of just see how that works with the syntax over here. We could be a little bit more explicit and say, include some brackets to make this more readable. Although some linters would just remove those brackets anyway from us. You can combine multiple if statements in our filtering. We can also use conditional logic in the value part of our comprehension statement. So here we're getting an even odd dictionary. You can see what that looks like. And I have my conditional logic happening here in the value part. So I can pull that part out and let's try this for some examples of X. So if X is one, I see that this is odd. If X is two, I see that this is even. Cool. So these kind of one liners are really nice when combined with comprehension statements. Here I'm using a dictionary comprehension and we're combining that with filtering. I think we've officially advanced into the intermediate portion of this video. And this is one of my favorite examples. Here we're taking a matrix list and I'm flattening it. I've also got some filtering in here, but for now let's break this down and remove the filtering and I'm, I'm gonna type this out. So we'll break this one down. So we've, we've got a matrix, right? It's like a two dimensional object. So I'm gonna say item for sublist in matrix. Now at this point, it's pretty weird. Sublist is being iterated over, but item has not been defined yet. So we need to do that. And I'm gonna say for item in sublist and this flattens the matrix like we want. It seems simple, but it's deceiving. This syntax is pretty weird. Um, and then I'm just adding um, like a conditional on there. So I could say, just filter out everything above three, for example. So let's get into some longer statements. Here, what we're doing is gonna create a dictionary of prime numbers. Here's what the result looks like. There's a few interesting things happening here. The first is the enumeration. We're saying for I num in enumerate numbers. And if I just run that, I can print out all of the indices of like each uh, iteration and the numbers associated with that iteration. Of course, we could also just say for like things and then we could say print those things. And as you might expect, we're seeing tuples come out. So this is just a way of, of like unpacking those tuples as we iterate over those numbers. And from there, we're creating a dictionary using the indices as the key and the numbers as the values. But then we're layering on an if statement. And in here, we're doing something interesting. So let's take a look at that part. Okay, so what we have here is an all statement. And inside of the all statement, we have another comprehension. This is kind of the, uh, the brains of the operation in terms of checking if our numbers are prime numbers. So let's keep breaking this down a little bit more. We've got this range part. I could pull that out and I could say range list, let's say, and I can make that a list. 
and then this number is not going to be defined, right? So let's do an example. Let's try 17. And then for this one, I'm just going to return the result like this. So we can see the range list is two, three, and four in this case. Now I'm iterating over this list where each element becomes D and I'm checking that if we divide 17 by that item, if there's a remainder. And of course, 17 divided by two does have a remainder. Same with three and same with four. And therefore we are declaring that it's a prime number. But focusing on our comprehensions, which is what we're interested in, what's cool is that we have this all statement. And inside of here, we might expect to have something like this, where we're checking all items in a list, or in this case, in a tuple, and seeing if they're true or not. But of course, in here, we could also have ones and zeros. That would be false. But if I had that as a one, then this would be true now. And what we can do is, is actually just write comprehensions directly in here. So I for I in range, for example, just as a really uh, simple example, something like this. This is equivalent to if I had actually explicitly included a list comprehension inside of there. So Python lets us simplify this just by going ahead and removing these. And some linting programs might do this automatically for you. That was a fun one. Let's do the next. Here we're getting a dictionary where each key is the first letter of a word and the value is the list of words starting with that letter. So for B, we have bat, bar, book, A, we have apple and Adam. Now here we have much the same stuff that we've been seeing, but what's cool is we have a nested list comprehension inside of our dictionary comprehension. And that's able to pick out all of the words that start with the uh, first letter of the word that we're iterating over, um, which actually is K, the sort of key of our dictionary. And we also have this set going on in here. And I haven't talked about set yet. So let's say we had some words and actually that'll be defined from above. So the set is gonna be the distinct values in our list. If I was to just call set of uh, the words, um, we would get all of the unique words. And if we had a set, we would do things like add items, and then that would be part of our list. And we could also remove items. Now things gone. That's how we work with sets. But we can also initialize sets with these built-in comprehensions. And that's what we're doing here. And of course, you know, you can do things like max, you know, I for I in range. And if I do 10, 19, we want this to be 18. Cool. And uh, you can also do this with stuff like minimum. Uh, yeah. And these are using generators in Python. So they're also really fast and memory efficient. Okay. I've got two more for you guys. Here we have a dictionary mapping each name to their score but only if the score is above a certain threshold. And here I'm enumerating over items that have that have multiple items contained inside of them. And that's kind of the, the interesting part of this one. The other interesting part, of course, is the F string, which we haven't talked about yet. Um, F strings are, are really beautiful things to do in Python. So if I had some variables, you know, A equals whatever and B equals like a number, I can just go ahead and insert those like this in an F string. Um, and when, once you get used to using F strings, they're like really, really nice. You can also do like um, formatting stuff like that. So this, you know, is printing it with two decimal places. Um, but you know, above that, you can do other stuff like a dot upper. You can you can pretty much just write Python code inside of here. Um, one thing you cannot do is use a new line. So I could do some kind of weird like let's say I I was actually sorry. Let's say I'm actually embedding an f string inside of an f string. Um, that's cool. You can do that. But now let's say inside of here, I want to have a new line character. Uh, uh can't do that. An f string f string expression cannot use a backslash. Probably didn't need to make that so complicated. I could have just said something like plus, you know, um, new line. This is something you might think is totally reasonable, right? But no, can't do that. But I digress. Let's get back to the interesting part in here. And that was my enumerate over this data object. So I've got access to data, right? So if I was to just do this, it should work. Um, but what's cool is like I'm unpacking the items of data. So if I had args say and I could do that, these are tuples, but now I can just go ahead and unpack them. And if you code in JavaScript, for example, you know that this is this is something we can do with JavaScript. And um, 
we can do this with Python too. Okay, folks, last example. Now, I'm sure I'm missing some sweet, gnarly list comprehension example. What I would love for you to do is go into the comments and hit me with the nastiest list comprehension that you've ever seen. And bonus points for if you're using something from like a library that has a lot of stars on GitHub, code that people actually use and depend on, I would love to see that. All right, so here's what I've got. We're gonna take this list of records, and what we want to do is get a transformed, let's look at it, a transformed list where we're extracting these category elements and then bringing all of the values together. But then we're, we're having some extra logic here where we're going to transform these values using a Lambda function. So there's two things that are new here. The first is that we have a list comprehension or rather a dictionary comprehension inside of another dictionary comprehension. But um, this is really like nothing too crazy, right? We're just kind of iterating over these categories in our records. Of course, we're, we're using a set to get all the distinct ones in here, but we've talked about that. And then for, for each of these, distinct categories we're cr creating that as our key and that's why you know the category names like a and b now are our keys in our transformed result uh, but then this is kind of the crazy thing is that for each of those we have a new comprehension happening inside of here and as far as i'm aware in python there's no limit on how deep we can go with these things now we've seen the enumeration over our record so we know what's going on there we've seen how we can filter down our lists and dictionaries. So that's not new either. Um, this part is a little bit crazy, isn't it? So our keys are actually tuples themselves. Whoa, that's pretty wild, right? So if we have a dictionary in Python, our keys can be objects. So I could say this is actually going to be my key and the value is going to be something like what the hell? And that works. Uh, which is pretty crazy. So if I call that A, my absolute favorite variable name, and then I want to reference that and I can try to do it this way. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty bizarre. One way you could use this would be, say you had a class that was um, like an item. Let's say that that was a data class. Okay, cool. And then we have that as a data class. And we had it like A like this. And so let's say we had um, kale was our item. And let's actually say this is a cost. I don't know. Okay, cool. So cost equals 2.45. All right, this is our kale, right? Okay, now let's say we had a shopping cart. And uh, in addition to kale, I'll say we also want apples. And the apples are going to be a bit cheaper, 50 cents. And then we're going to say uh, we have a cart you know, with kale, kale, and apple. Let's do that. Okay, cool. So now we have this cart of items, but our items are this class, right? What I'm getting at is that these items can now be elements of our dictionary, which might be desirable. So what I can do is I want to count up the number of items and assign those as keys in a dictionary. Item counts, and this is going to be our dictionary. And this is the idea is that my keys can now be these items. So I can say um, item and then I want the length of, let's do it this way. Let's say I for I in cart if I equals item, and I have to iterate over my items now for item in cart. Um, this would be a bad idea because for each item, we're, we're doing like a nested iteration, so it's re really inefficient. There's definitely better ways of doing this. And okay, it's not, uh, so my items are actually not hashable. So that means that this tuple here is, there's a way of hashing it, right? So if I was to hash that tuple, there's a, okay, so it maps to an integer, right? So I need to make sure there's a way of hashing my item here. Um, but you know, if I tried that, let's say I tried to hash my kale, Okay, that's not working. So what I need is in here, I could implement a hash and I could just return the hash of, oh, so I should do the name, right? So, okay, so I should have name in here and then I could have a name equals tail and name equals apple. Okay, so this now might work. So let's see, 
Okay, so now I'm able to hash my items like I want, um, which means if I have a cart, I should be able to run this. And indeed I can. So I could get say the item count of my kale this way. I think that you can just throw code together like this um, is so beautiful. And I think this is why people love Python. One of the reasons why people love Python. All right, so that was just a whole tangent about this part right here, how we're using um, like an object as a key. But, but I also wanna explain the Lambda part. And honestly, Lambda functions are pretty straightforward. So um, here we are creating a Lambda function and then calling it. So in this, for example, if we just had this guy here, uh, we can call our Lambda function. A uh, more simple example of this, we get four, right? Um, zero, we get zero, boom. Cool, and um, the, you know, the typical way of, of, of defining a Lambda would be something like this, you can, reference it using like a function name here i'm using funk you know and i could have even multiple arguments for example so i could have lambda of x and y and that could say be x times y and it just lets you really quickly create functions and um, in fact we're doing that inline inside of our giant crazy comprehension which completes our noob to pro journey of comprehensions in Python. I hope you've learned something and I'd love to know what the coolest thing is that you learned from this video. So you can let me know that. In addition, I'm gonna circle back to what I asked you earlier. What's the gnarliest comprehension that you found out there in the wild? And I'd love to see that. I've got another video on Python where I talk about the Zen of Python, and that's in a very similar style to this one. So if you like this video, I think you'll also like that one. And if you're interested in learning full stack data science, you'll find some valuable resources over on my Patreon page. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Namaste.